Now, let me start off by saying this. When it comes to The Undertaker, I've always said he's my second favorite wrestler of all time behind Hulk Hogan, and that's 100% true. But there's never been a professional wrestler in the history of the business that I will ever respect more, do respect more, or have respect more than The Undertaker. I mean, you think about it. This dude's been around since I was nine years old. I'm about to be 36, and this dude's still set to work another WrestleMania. Just incredible. And when I think of The Undertaker, I think of the real Mr. WrestleMania. Not that phony baloney propaganda political bullshit Shawn Michaels that the company spun on you for so many years and so many of you bought into. The Undertaker, the dude that's been wrestling at WrestleMania since 1991, the dude that has a 21 straight WrestleMania match winning streak, the dude that has been a part of so many main events and featured big time money matches at WrestleMania, that Undertaker, that's the real Mr. WrestleMania, period. Furthermore, when I think of the lexicon of all of the WWE wrestlers and performers and stars and superstars of all time, I think because of longevity and importance and significance to the company and the fact that he was always the one constant, the pillar, the bedrock, and he was there for the Hogan era, he was there for the new generation, he was there for the Attitude Era, ruthless aggression, and all of this, I think there's a very strong argument to make that not Hulk Hogan or Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock or most certainly not fucking Shawn Michaels. It's The Undertaker that is the greatest WWE superstar of all time. In fact, it wouldn't bother me if he was introduced from now on as the GOAT, because to me, when it comes to the WWE, The Undertaker is the GOAT. And it's that simple. So, with that said, it's important to know that sometimes even our heroes, our icons, our legends that we place on a higher pedestal, I can disappoint us, and sometimes be just ass wrong and say some really stupid things. Doesn't mean you lose any respect for him. Doesn't mean that you don't like him any less or more or less. It just it's something you, it makes you kind of shake your head. And the Undertaker said something recently that frankly kind of made me shake my head when it comes to his thoughts on internet wrestling fans. Now I don't know what this interview was for. I, I, I'm not, was this something he did with Michael Cole in the WWE Network or somebody else? Or was it for some local station? I'm not sure. I don't care about all those details. I don't even know if it's something that just recently happened or if it's an older interview. I didn't bother to care enough to look, frankly. I was more concerned about what he said in general and kind of what it represented. And I didn't want to take anything out of context. So I've got the exact transcript minus the filler words like the you knows and some of the those and the pauses. Uh, the minute and seven clip you see on YouTube, I've got the primary part and bulk of what The Undertaker actually said. And I'm going to read it to you now because I want to make sure that I don't take anything out of context. I don't leave any important details out because I want to make sure I respond to some of the silliness that came out of the goat's mouth. So let me go ahead and read off first with what he said. He's, he kind of jumps in and he says, because a lot of our guys, unfortunately, listen to the people on the Internet, the so-called experts who never laced up a pair of boots. Then the guy, almost sounded like Michael Full, I think, jumps in and asks, what about the internet? And the Undertaker goes, some of it's fine. There's some really good fan-based sites. They're fans that like and enjoy wrestling. It's the ones that call themselves experts and have all these cures for the business and all of its ills, I think they're a big joke. And the people that buy into this are only smart to the business, basically because of what we let them be smart too. But you listen to them and they have all the answers. And this guy needs to be pushed and this guy needs to go and The Undertaker needs to retire 10 years ago. I kind of think it's funny. They forgot their fans. And that's all there are, our fans. I'm not downplaying the role of our fans because that's what we're all about. So very interesting thoughts from The Undertaker. Not necessarily all that incredibly surprising when you really think about it. You'd expect some of the old heads, the veterans, to kind of hold this type of philosophy. And I get some of what he's saying. But at the end of the day, I think a lot of this is ridiculous on so many different levels. First, talking about listening to the people on the Internet. You know, even sometimes I'm guilty of this, too, talking about Internet fans and this. You know, frankly, most of the people that watch wrestling now are pretty much on the Internet in some way, shape, or form and probably will pine 
about said wrestling at some particular time. So if anything, that could speak to being a little bit out of touch with the current digital reality. Number two, when you talk about the people in the WWE listening too much to the people on the internet, mind you, Mark, that these are the same people that were those internet fans 10, 15, 20 years ago, burning it up in the early days of the AOL chat rooms and so on. These were the guys that loved wrestling, but weren't athletic enough to be involved in any other sports, weren't talented enough to be actors or do other things, so they decided they wanted to be professional wrestlers. That's what they were marks for. So now the marks that used to be outside of the business have now infiltrated and taken over the business. Don't forget about that. The internet that you like to complain about or you're mocking here and talking shit about, the majority of the people that are in the business now got into the business because of said internet. Furthermore, talking about listening to the people on the internet, then why the hell does the WWE push so many of the internet in indie darlings? And just think about that for a second. He said the thing about good sites from fans that like and enjoy wrestling. So people that don't always 100% praise what the WWE does and professional wrestling in general does, they're lesser fans or they're not fans at all? What are you, fucking Donald Trump? Talking about fake news? All the while, the names that he cites, like Fox News and Breitbart and so on, are every bit as fake as the other mainstream media. These are the idiots talking about how the mainstream media is a joke when... Seriously, if you really want to think about it, the Fox News of the world are mainstream media. And they are every bit the problem of a CNN, an MSNBC, a, a Time, a New York Times, and so on and so forth. But to sit there and say that because they're not favorable to you, that makes them any less fans is completely and totally ridiculous. That's the type of immaturity you expect out of the current administration in the White House. I think it's political too much here, but I mean, come on. Let's put on our big boy pants here. Just because people aren't always praiseworthy of you doesn't mean that they don't like it. And frankly, sometimes it's dangerous to listen to the people that always pump you full of gas and blow your heads up because they could really be bullshitting you. They could be saying it for a variety of different reasons and ulterior motives that aren't necessarily good or productive for the business as a whole and the WWE specifically. And sometimes some of those ones that are kind of amiable and they just kind of always go with the flow they can be really really dangerous because they might just kind of watch it out of habit but they're not the ones that you're going to make the money with talking about these so-called experts that have all the cures are a big joke you know i get it and this is kind of that protectionist mentality bullshit of the people in the business that arrogance of superiority of the wrestling bubble well you don't know what it's like so do 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 and frankly that carries over a lot to the business world like i work for a major credit card company, I work on the regulatory side of the house and I see it all the time from customers and people within the company, you know, and I see it all the time when it's talked about in the news, talking about banking regulations. And I know flat out that the people talking about them have no clue what these regulations actually do or what they're designed to do or how they actually work. But everybody's got an opinion about them. And this is going to fix it or that's going to fix it. And it is a joke. And frankly, sometimes working for a big corporation, the people at the highest reaches of the corporation can do really dumb, stupid, idiotic things. And then on the flip side of that, customers can say some of the most bullshit, blatantly false, ignorant, idiotic fucking things you can possibly imagine. But at the end of the day, if you don't listen to your audience, you're in for a world of hurt. And frankly, the WWE not listening to their audience for years helped the company to dig a huge ditch and led it to lose a huge portion of its fan base. And this is not the only company. You think of a TNA who in the course of five years, a variety of factors at play, yes, but they've lost, what, 70% of their viewing audience from what they used to have on Spike TV? 70%. That's not good no matter how much you spend it. Well, the WWE has lost a huge portion of their audience over the past 10 to 15 years. And part of that is because they don't listen to their fans. So you can mock the so-called experts and think they're a big joke and assume that they don't know shit. But frankly, you have to wonder 
how much you can actually respect the intelligence or the business savvy of a company that's okay with losing half of its core audience over the past 10 plus years. Doesn't seem like a very sound business model to me, Mark, at least from a domestic standpoint. Furthermore, now when the WWE listens to fans, it seems like they're primarily listening to the wrong types of fans that only help to bury the WWE even more in the quicksand of suck, suck that they've been uh, unfortunate enough to allow themselves to get quagmired in. The whole thing about only being smart to what you let us know to be smart about, first of all, that's dumb in a sense because people have known this shit has been scripted for generations. Even going back to the 30s when there was a big expose posted in the New York Times about how somebody got pissed that he got stiffed on a payoff, so he told all the fucking secrets. And in many areas, it killed wrestling for years, and it eventually came back. But people have known this shit is fake, scripted, predetermined for fucking ever. Furthermore, do we really need all the shoot interviews and the Meltzers and the Alvarezes and the pro wrestling torches and all these other fuck sticks to tell us that John Cena and Randy Orton have to be majorly powerful political players to be able to keep their positions at the top for so fucking long? Does it really take a rocket surgeon or a brain scientist, and I said that right if you get what I mean, to figure out that God himself, Triple H, had his position in a lot of ways because he's bonking the boss's daughter? It's not hard to figure out. I mean, it's just not. You don't need to sit there and have all this information put out to be able to figure some fu su some fucking things. Especially when you figure a story is heading in a certain direction and somebody else still goes over any fucking ways. You're like, oh, you don't need to know all this shit. And furthermore, if you want to talk about only being smart to what you let us know to be smart about, which is dumb in and of itself. But let's say, okay, let's play that game. Well, then who the fuck is to blame for those secrets getting out in the first fucking place? Don't blame the receivers of the message. Blame the deliverers. And I'm kind of tired of all these people in professional wrestling wanting to sit there and blame others and blame fans and do this and do that. Look in the mirror. Point the finger at the person in the fucking mirror. Because it's the idiots in the business that have created this culture and environment. And I'm sure he understands that and he should know better. Talking about the whole thing of this guy needs to be pushed or this guy needs to go. Imagine that. Your fans, your paying customers, trying to tell you who they want to see and who they don't. <laughs> That's where you can see where Vince McMahon and The Undertaker are very much in lockstep in a lot of ways. Only the WWE would sit there on the one hand and talk about how important their fans are, and then on the flip side, sit there and have this opinion of, you're going to like who we want you to like, God damn it! We're going to force it down your throat and eventually it's going to get over. Back in the day, that shit could happen, and it could work. See, Ultimate Warrior is one example of many. It didn't quite work that way. It's a different world. It's a different reality. It's a different time. You got to at least hear what the people are saying. You got to at least pay attention. Even if you don't always heed it, even if you don't always act upon it, you got to know what's being said. And sitting there and dismissing people for having an opinion, oh my God, now you sound like me. And then the whole thing about they forgot their fans. Number one, if so, it's only because of the fact that the lines have been so blurred because the biggest marks of all are now in professional wrestling, Mark. It's funny talking about marks yet your first name is Mark. Ah, whatever. But think about that, though. They forgot their fans. Number one, most of the marks, the biggest marks, are in the business now. Number two, so many of the top guys and so many of these fucking wrestling companies look like the goddamn fans. So what the hell do you expect them to think? They forgot their fans? Because now the lines have been so blurred, they think they can actually be legit, real deal, top flight WWE superstars. And it's ridiculous. But you're saying you're not downplaying the role of your fans. Uh, you kind of just did, buddy. You, you really did. <laughs> And, and, and furthermore, what's so ridiculous about this is at the end of the day, the fans are your customers. And without them, you have no career. So instead of blaming the fans and talking shit about the fans and mocking the fans for their thoughts and opinions, maybe do something to better appeal to them so that way you can please those customers more. And oh my God, imagine this, 
have potentially more customers. I mean, it's not really hard to figure out here that without your fans, you are nothing. They are the ones that pay your salary. They're the ones that sit there and make it all possible. If you don't have an audience to play for, if you don't have fans to appease, if you don't have those paying customers, there's no need for a professional wrestling business. And while that doesn't entitle fans to be able to do whatever the fuck they want, like bothering these fans like idiots at 5 o'clock in the morning asking for autographs and then wondering why these guys might be pissed about that, when it doesn't sit there and entitle them to sit there and stalk them or hack their social media, stalk them at their fucking houses, talk shit about their girlfriends and wives and all this other crap. At the end of the day, from a business standpoint, it really isn't a good idea to downplay your customers because eventually if you insult your customers enough, maybe for a period of time it doesn't matter, but eventually it does. And in particular, when you start to insult the intelligence of your customers, no matter how stupid they may be, and sometimes wrestling fans can be incredibly big morons, we most certainly can be. At the end of the day, there comes a jump-off point, there becomes a breaking point, where people say enough's is enough, and I've had it. And when you look at the WWE of recent years, so many people have indeed had it. So, I mean, you can sit there and downplay it all you want, and you can continue to sit on this high horse about how dumb the people on the internet are. You know, most everybody's on the internet. And that it especially includes the people that used to be in WWE. And frankly, some of the people that have the stupidest and most off-the-mark opinions about said WWE are the ones that used to work for WWE. And it seems like they're just pandering to get a, a repeat spot back in the company, which I get to a degree, but at the end of the day, Jesus Christ has some fucking dignity. I mean, like... A future Hall of Famer sitting there and saying, a guy that should know better, who's done a lot of great things over the years, Chris Jericho, talking about how the WWE doesn't intentionally sabotage people. Fans don't say that dumb shit. Chris Jericho said that dumb shit. I mean, we can't even call out all the other shit because it's too numerous to name, and we, I've talked about it over the years. But I think at the end of the day, what really bothers me the most about this, it comes down to the simple premise of you're not a real fan if you complain about something, in particular in this case, the WWE. Real, true fan, fans don't complain about it. It's like you're just supposed to kind of shut your mouth about it and always be positive about it. And the second part of that is that if you've never laced up your boots, which is always something stupid that people like The Undertaker or many other people in wrestling have to say, then your opinion just really doesn't matter that much and you don't really know what you're talking about. Well, it's just ridiculous on so many different levels. First, if you want to have fans that are more positively passionate about your product, then make your fucking product better. If you don't like people complaining about it, either one, get out of the fucking business, or two, make your product as such to where they don't have as much to complain about. If you did that, maybe fans like me wouldn't have to complain so much about it. Just a thought. And fair or not, and this goes into all aspects of the business world, customers can say whatever the hell they want, and you better listen. Even if you don't always heed it, even if you don't always act upon it, even if you don't correct your behaviors that they're addressing, you better damn sure well good and know Know what the customer is saying, even more so than your employees. The internal customer, your employees, they are important, but at the end of the day, they only matter so much. It's all about the external customer. It's about those paying customers, especially in professional wrestling. You might not always like what they have to say, but you better know what the hell they're saying. And there's going to be some modicum in truth in what they're saying, because if there wasn't, they wouldn't be saying it especially if there's enough of it. And this whole thing of, you know, you have to be always positive about it. Nah, that's bullshit. Because I think about it this way, being a Bulls fan for years and years, you know, I got to grow up during the era of Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, and oh my God, what a great time to grow up as a kid. Watch the Bulls dominate the 90s, win six titles in an eight-year stretch, a dynasty in every sense of the world. Word, I got to watch the greatest player of all time. 
But then the Bulls fucking dismantled the organization because that fat-ass piece of shit penguin Jerry Krause, who I can't wait until he's fucking dead so I can go find him and piss on his fucking grave, said, oh, players don't win championships, oh, oh, organizations do. And then this stupid motherfucker fire sales the organization, not really getting shit in return, so that way he can intentionally tank, draft people like Elton Brand, and then the next year, oh, we really like Marcus Heiser, oh. After all those years of drafting power forwards, such as Dickie Simkins, Corey Blunt, and Jason Caffey, I still hold a resentment to that Bulls organization, in particular Jerry Reinsdorf, for allowing that shit to happen the way it fucking played out almost 20 goddamn years later. And this Bulls team over the years has pissed me off to no ends at different point in times. And frankly, some of the fans have pissed me off because at no point in time over the past 18 plus years have they been anywhere close to being a real true championship contending team, no matter how much the idiotic other Bulls fans think they have been or think they are close to being. But that does not mean in any way, shape, or form that I still do not love the Chicago Bulls, do not root for the Chicago Bulls, do not support the Chicago Bulls, do not watch the Chicago Bulls. You look at the Chicago Bears. There have been a lot of bad football over the years since the time I was an early, early kid and got to enjoy the Bears of the mid-80s. And even they were a disappointment. They should have won more than one Super Bowl, but that's all they got. I had to sit there for a long time and listen to people spin this fucking defense bullshit about how good Rex Grossman was and how he was the future and how he was all this shit and then we found out it's a fucking Super Bowl. This dumbass organization trading all they did for Jay Cutler and then standing behind this stupid motherfucker for eight fucking years and all the other dumbass decisions they've made. Hiring certain head coaches, putting certain general managers in place, allowing Ted Phillips to still have his job as team president, all because he got a fucking stadium deal done 20 years ago when it wasn't really truly all that great of a stadium deal because they couldn't get the extra $100 million to get the roof over the fucker so that way they could host things like the Final Four, like the Super Bowl, and oh, ho, 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 in a major market like Chicago. Could you imagine actually having a WrestleMania in Soldier Field? I complain about the Bears all the time. Because they piss me off all the time because they fucking deserve it because it's a stupid ass organization. But at the end of the day, my love for the Chicago Bears runs deep. And I resent when anybody tells me that I'm too negative about them and therefore I'm not a real fan. Fuck you. I structure my work life and frankly my personal life around that three to three and a half hours every Sunday or Monday or Thursday night or whenever the fuck it is that the Chicago Bears play. How dare anybody sit there and tell me I'm not a real fan because I'm not 100% positive about them all the time. Again, if they did better and they did those type of things to where I could be more positive about them and they merited it and deserved it, then that's what they would get from me. Like I look at the Chicago Cubs. You know, the Pinel, Aquafina Lou, Lou Pinella led teams of the mid-2000s. Fucking sitting there and hitting overpaid ass Alfonso Soriano lead off. Only dipshit Cubs fans trying to tell me that was a good thing. At the end of the day, guess what? Jeff was right. They were fucking wrong. Then I sat there and talked about how Jim Henry was a clown and that this team needed a full and complete rebuild. And if they got the right guy, like a Theo Epstein, to lead the rebuild, it might take five years. But once that happened and was allowed to take place, the Cubs would finally end that fucking curse and win the goddamn World Series. And lo and behold, what do you know is exactly what happened. All those years of frustration and being pissed off didn't make me any less of a Cubs fan because I still stayed. I still cheered this fucking team. I still rooted for them. I still supported them. I still plunked money in the product via merchandise and other fucking things. Going to games and so on and so forth. How dare anybody sit there and tell me I'm not a fucking Cubs fan because I wasn't always 100% positive. Bleeding the fucking lovable loser Cubby Blue Wrigley Field is awesome bullshit. But at the end of the day, the Cubs did those things. It took time, and it ultimately paid off. And I finally got to celebrate the one thing I was waiting for before I could go ahead and kick off and die to see in my lifetime, which was the Chicago Cubs winning a World Series. Now I'm just on bonus time. Don't hear me saying a whole lot of negative shit about the Cubs now, do you? Why? Because they don't give me a reason to do so. Because they do the right things. They do things the right way. And they've went about their business in a certain way where it's really hard to knock it. Now, sometimes maybe I will question a decision here or there, but that's just kind of natural. It's the name of the game. 
but that doesn't make me any less of a fucking fan. And on top of all of this, if fans can't complain about professional wrestling or they can't be right about anything pertaining to professional wrestling because they've never laced up a, the boots, then okay, I tell you what, I'll make wrestlers a deal. Undertaker, everybody. If I can't complain or critique or talk about anything or criticize anything in a negative way about WWE or wrestling in general because I've never laced up a booth or worked for one of these companies, then that's fine. And if I can't do that, then as wrestlers, you can never complain about a fucking airline losing your fucking baggage because at the end of the day, most of you have probably never worked for an airline. You most certainly have no clue about how all the inner workings of the baggage going from point A to B to C to Z, sometimes Y to come back to Z, actually works. If you haven't worked for the airline and you don't know all the inner workings and every specific detail, then you can't fucking complain about the airlines anymore. How they screw up your seating, the, the layovers, the delays, all this other crap. Then you're done. You can't talk about that shit no more. Then all these fucking wrestling marks, and by wrestling marks, again, I mean the people in the business that sit there and talk about MMA. What the fuck would these guys know about whether it was a good MMA show or a bad MMA show? Because, again, at the end of the day, so many of these fucking fancy fairies lived in the world of imaginary fighting. What the fuck would they know about a blood sport like UFC, MMA? They know as much as I do, which is bubkiss. If we're going to use professional wrestling logic here, doesn't matter if they've watched it for 5, 10, 15, 20 goddamn years. Doesn't matter if they go to their local dojo and practice shit Brazilian jiu-jitsu and now an MMA tough guy, badass. Look at me with my cauliflower here. I'm awesome. <sighs> at the end of the day, you never fought professionally to MMA? Then shut the fuck up. You can't talk about it anymore. Especially negatively about it. Because what the fuck would you know? Furthermore, you can't fucking talk negative about any of the other sports. Because unless you played in the NFL or the NBA or Major League Baseball or hockey or NASCAR or any of these other major sports, then your opinion means as much as mine does as a professional wrestling fan, which is fucking zero. Same thing extends to politics. All you guys in the wrestling business, have you been a city council member, a mayor, a House of Representatives member, a senator, president, chairman of a political party? Lobbyist? Special interest group? You've been none of that. So based off of professional wrestling logic, your opinion means nothing and you're not allowed to have an opinion. Or frankly, any other product or service. Because if you don't know all the inner workings of the iPhone 7S or whatever the fuck it is, iPhone 8, I don't know. I don't have an iPhone because I think they're stupid. Compared to, let's say, a Samsung Galaxy, whatever the fuck version. Since you don't know the inner workings of every piece of the iPhone versus the Samsung Galaxy, and you didn't work for either one of those companies, then you can't have an opinion about that. You can't have an opinion about whether a movie is any fucking good or not, because you haven't been in movies, and we don't count the WWE Studios crap, because the WWE doesn't know how to do fucking movies. It's just fucking ridiculous that after all these years, so many people in wrestling, that should know better, just don't. And still hold this opinion. If you're not 100% positive, you're not a real fan. That's just complete and utter bullshit. Number two, that if you've never done it before, you don't really know. No, unfortunately, it's the people that have done it that apparently don't really know. Because if they did, the WWE and the goddamn business wouldn't be in the shitty-ass shape it's in. I love The Undertaker. Nothing but respect for the dude. Like I said, the real Mr. WrestleMania. To me, the GOAT of WWE. But even The Undertaker can say something stupid. And to me, that's clearly what he did. And while it's kind of disappointing, it really shouldn't be that surprising. Because does anybody involved with professional wrestling today, in the business, outside of the business, say anything smart at all?